Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm Urs Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. We are back for the Week 8 2023 USFL preview and predictions. I'm going to go over every single game and pick who I think will win each of these week's games. Now, the first game of the Week 8 USFL slate is the Houston Gamblers going on the road to the Pittsburgh Maulers. Now, this game is in Canton, Ohio, so no home field advantage for either team so there's not gonna be a lot of fans there but still I think that the Houston Gamblers are a team with a lot of momentum right now yes they lost last week to stop their four game winning streak that they previously had but they lost to Memphis 23-20 last week but they're four and three and they've been playing some really solid football the last few weeks Kenji Bahar he was 18 of 39 for 216 yards he had two picks and only one carry for four yards I think Kenji Bahar needs to run the football more and I think that Kenji Bahar needs to find a way to cut back on the picks because when he doesn't turn the ball over and he's running the football he's much more comfortable and I think that is a thing that the Houston Gamblers need to get back to doing but he is a solid quarterback Mark Thompson at 13 carries for 42 yards and two touchdowns and two receptions for 17 yards Mark Thompson is a great running back and he has been solid all season for the Houston Gamblers when he's been able to play. Houston lost the first two games of this season when he wasn't able to play because he was injured, but Mark Thompson has been a big asset for the Houston Gamblers because he can run the football and I think they need to hand the ball off to him a bit more. Josh Peterson had five receptions for 93 yards and T.O. Redding had five receptions for 57 yards so overall the Houston Gamblers, they were pretty solid in a loss last week to the Memphis Showboats and as long as they play a really solid game they'll have a great chance to win this game as well. The Pittsburgh Maulers, they're 2-5. and five. They are really struggling. One of the bottom teams in the USFL. Last week, they lost to the Philadelphia Stars 37-31. They actually had a better game last week. Now, I don't know if that's because the Philadelphia Stars are struggling on the defensive end, and they gave the Pittsburgh Maulers a chance to win, but at least Pittsburgh showed signs of life on the offensive end in this game. Troy Williams, he was 18-28 for 145 yards. A touchdown and a pick and 11 carries for 44 yards. He's a solid runner. He's a dual-threat quarterback. He's another guy like Kenji Bahar, though, that can be a little bit turnover prone. Needs to find a way to cut back on the turnovers, but he's still a really solid quarterback when he's not making mistakes. Andre London had three carries for 26 yards and two were set for 11 yards. Unfortunately for the Pittsburgh Maulers, their running game is not really getting much going on the ground to help out Troy Williams. And Mason Stocky had three receptions for 34 yards and Matt Siebert had four receptions for 22 yards. Since there's no home field advantage, I don't think that the Pittsburgh Maulers are going to have a great chance to win this game. I think they can keep it close because of the fact that they did hang with the field Philadelphia Stars last week, but the Gamblers, they've been the more solid team the last few weeks. They did trip up against the Memphis Showboats, but I'm going to go with the Houston Gamblers to beat the Pittsburgh Maulers 24-21 to move to 5-3 and three in the Maulers to fall to 2-6 and six and unfortunately out of playoff contention. Now the next game on deck, we got the Philadelphia Stars and the Birmingham Stallions. This could be the game of the week and it is in Birmingham, so there will be a legitimate home crowd for the Stallions. They're going to be loud and proud and I think that they will definitely help out their team. The Philadelphia Stars, last week they beat the Pittsburgh Maulers 37-31 to really give themselves a chance to stay in playoff contention. That was a big win over their in-state rivals. Case Cookus was 18-30 for 235 yards, two touchdowns and a pick, and four carries for 28 yards. He was really solid. He's a guy that knows Bar Andrews' system. That is the Stars head coach. They've been a tandem for a few seasons in other leagues as well, not just the USFL, so they have a lot of experience. And Case Cookus is a guy that when he's protected and he can show off a little bit of his mobility, he can actually be a really solid quarterback. And Matt Cole a 22 carry for 82 yards and two touchdowns and two receptions for 13 yards. So you could tell. I don't know if it's because the Pittsburgh Maulers defense wasn't that great, but the Philadelphia Stars offensive line did protect Case Cook. It's a bit better in that game, and their running game finally got going for the first time in a while. Philadelphia's running game has not been that great this season, but Matt Coleman finally got some yards on the ground. Corey Coleman had four receptions for 75 yards and a touchdown, and Devin Gray had the exact same amount of receptions and yards for four receptions, 75 yards, but he did not have a touchdown. But both receivers were really solid for the Philadelphia Stars. This is going to be really tough, however, for them to go on the road and beat the Birmingham Stallions on their own turf because Alex Magoo, he was 16-23 for 176 yards and a touchdown, a seven carry for 22 yards and a touchdown, and a 24-20 win over the New Orleans Breakers on their own field, even though they did designate as a home game for New Orleans. And as you can tell, the Birmingham Stallions are starting to figure out their way with Alex Magoo as the head of the office. They've been struggling all year without Jamar Smith and Bo Scarborough at running back, but they're starting to get things figured out, and they're looking more and more like the team we saw last season that won the USFL. C.J. Marable, 17 carry for 86 yards and 6 receptions for 52 yards. C.J. Marable's kind of turning into Wesley Hills. He's catching the ball out of the backfield, and he's a guy that can run the ball 
ball as well on the ground. When he gets blocks, he's pretty solid. Jay Sternberger, two recess for 28 yards and a touchdown. Really solid tight end that should be given an NFL chance again. And Adrian Hardy, a three recession for 21 yards. The Birmingham Stallions, they're a solid team. They're going to be on their own field. I think the Philadelphia Stars can give them a game. I think they'll have a great chance to win as long as Case Cook is, is protected. I think that the Stars will have a chance. But Shark Dog in that defense, Scooby Wright and the Birmingham Stallions are going to do everything they possibly can to shut down the Philadelphia Stars offense. And I think they'll do just enough. And the Birmingham Stallions will move to 6-2 and two and beat the Philadelphia Stars who will fall to 4-4 four and four and win 28-24. Should be a great game and possibly the game of the week in the USFL. The next game we got the Memphis Showboats and the New Jersey Generals in Canton, Ohio. This is another game. There's no home field advantage, so it's not going to really help either team. The Memphis Showboats, they did beat the Houston Gamblers 23-20 this past week. Memphis is a team just like Houston that's playing much better than they were at the beginning of the season. At the beginning of the year, Memphis was an anemic offense. Their defense wasn't doing anything as well, but they're finally starting to do a better job. Cole Kelly was 12-24 for 146 yards, two touchdowns and a pick, and two carries for zero yards, so Cole Kelly's not really a scrambler, but when he's not turning the ball over, that's all Memphis needs him to do. Just don't make mistakes, don't throw picks, don't give the ball to the other team. And if Cole Kelly does that, he's a solid quarterback. Kareth White, a 19 carry for 81 yards, and had a reception for six yards. Jawan Washington was solid on the ground as well, so Memphis has a tandem at running back. And Derek Dillon had two receptions for 72 yards and a touchdown. And Vinny Papelli had three receptions for 23 yards and a touchdown. The Memphis offense is coming to life, and their defense is getting better and better. And I think the Memphis Showboats are a team that is improving at the right time to be able to potentially have a shot to make the U.S. of a playoffs this year. This will be a big win for them. But New Jersey, they're a team that needs this win to stay in playoff contention. They're 2-5. and five. And last week, they did lose in a close game to the Michigan Panthers, 25-22. That was a game they had. They were so close, but they just found a way to lose that one. Kyle Lalletta was 9-16 for 112 yards and two touchdowns and DeAndre Johnson was 9 of 14 for a touchdown at 89 yards. Both quarterbacks played. Both quarterbacks actually did a solid job. Unfortunately for the Generals it just wasn't enough to get the win. Darius Victor 8 carries for 52 yards 4 receptions for 29 yards and a touchdown. He's a solid running back that is kind of like CJ Maribel and Wesley Hills. He can catch the ball in the backfield and also run the ball up the middle. A pretty solid running back as long as he's not fumbling the ball. He had a couple of fumbles a few games ago which caused the Generals to lose that one but when he's not fumbling the ball he's a solid running back. Alonzo Moore 6 receptions for 63 yards two touchdowns, and Cam Eccles Looper, two receptions for 43 yards. I think this is a game that could be close. I think the New Jersey Generals have a chance to hang with the Memphis Showboats as long as New Jersey plays to the level they played against the Michigan Panthers this past week. But I'm really buying the Memphis hype. I think they actually are starting to peak at the right time. They're playing really good football. Cole Kelly's not turning it over, and the Memphis Showboats defense is for real. They're coming to play week in and week out the last few weeks. And I'm going to go with the Memphis Showboats to beat the New Jersey Generals 24-14 to for Memphis to move to 5-3, and and for New Jersey to fall to 2-6, and six, and unfortunately out of playoff contention, just like the Pittsburgh Maulers. Now, under our last game of the Week 8 USFL slate, you've got the Michigan Panthers going on the road to the New Orleans Breakers. This is another game that's in Birmingham, so there is no home field advantage, unfortunately, for the New Orleans Breakers, but New Orleans is a team that has been sliding lately in Michigan. They were on a free fall losing four in a row, but they finally won last week to move to 3-4 and four and stay in the playoff hunt, and they beat the New Jersey Generals 25-22. That was a massive win for Michigan to give themselves a chance to have meaningful games down the stretch of the season. Josh Love, he was 16-29 for 264 yards, three touchdowns, and five carries for three yards. This was the best game Josh Love has played since week one for Michigan. He's a guy that needs confidence, and he does not need Carson Strong to be coming into the game for him. Michigan needs to continue to keep Josh Love in a quarterback and hope that he does well because he is their best chance to succeed. And He is a guy that can play, but unfortunately he's a little bit inconsistent, but had a really good week last week, and if he plays well in this game, he could give the Michigan Panthers a chance to win this game as well. Reggie Corbin had 20 carries for 78 yards and three receptions for 22 yards. One of the better running backs in the USFL. He's definitely a guy that has some speed and can really run out of the backfield for the Panthers. Stevie Scott's a solid bruiser running running back as well. Joe Walker, five receptions for 121 yards and a touchdown. And Trey Quinn, it's three receptions for 61 yards and a touchdown. And he had a pass for 19 yards. A little bit of trickery for the Michigan Panthers. Might have just been enough to help them get the win. I think the Panthers played really solid last week. They'll have to play really solid again if they want to get this win. But the New Orleans Breakers, they've lost three in a row. They started the season 4-0. They lost their last three games. And last week, they lost in heartbreaking fashion. The Birmingham Stallions 24-20. It was a close game. They almost had a chance to win, but they just fell short. New Orleans, if they want to make the playoffs, they need to find a way to win this game or they could fall out of contention because of the fact the South Division is really tough. But Lee Bethel Thompson, he was 24-42 for 279 yards, a touchdown, an interception. He needs protection. He's not a scrambler. He's an older guy as well in his 30s, has had a great career 
career in the Canadian Football League, but the New Orleans Breakers offensive line has to protect him, and when he's protected, he does do a solid job overall. Wesley Hills at 20 carry for 77 yards and 3 reception for 11 yards. He's a great all-around running back, one of the best running backs in the USFL as well. He's a guy that has definitely helped out the Breakers offense, and when he's getting blocked by the offensive line, it definitely takes the pressure off McLean Bethel Thompson. Johnny Dixon is 6 reception for 97 yards, and Jonathan Abs is 6 reception for 88 yards, and Sage Surratt is 64 receiving yards as well. The New Orleans Breakers have a great trio of receivers. They've got a pretty solid offense as long as they can keep McLean Bethel Thompson upright, and their defense is not bad at all, but they do need to find a way to close out games because the Breakers have lost three in a row. I think this game could be really close. The way the Michigan Panthers played last week has given me a little bit of hope that they'll have a shot in this game, but I do think that the New Orleans Breakers, they know they need this game. They're technically at home, even though there isn't a home field advantage, and I'm going to go with the New Orleans Breakers to beat the Michigan Panthers 21-17, to find a way to win this game and move to 5-3, and and the Michigan Panthers to fall to 3-5 and and be really close to falling out of playoff contention, but this should be a great week of USFL games. I'm going to go with the Houston Gamblers, the Birmingham Stallions, the Memphis Showboats, and the New Orleans Breakers to all get wins this week. Should be some great games, and as we get closer and closer to the USFL playoffs, it'll be interesting to see which teams find a way to sneak into the playoffs this year. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Comment down below what you think about the Week 8 USFL games, what you think about my picks, and which teams you think will find a way to win this week's games. Follow me on Twitter as well. Link is in the description, and I will see you next time.